I want to be a bath person, but I just can't do it. I can't do it. Think about it. Like you're sitting in your own filth and the temperature is never ever perfect. It's either too hot or too cold or if it is perfect, it's perfect for a good what two minutes. I even went and bought this bubble bath today and I mean it's all almost gone. It smells lovely but the experience is so fleeting. A bath where the bubbles disappear in two minutes is is it's not it. It's not it. And I'm already too hot and I'm starting to sweat. I still have to wash my hair and take my makeup off. So what? This is just prolonging the whole bathing process. Is this meant to be enjoyable? It's not. It's like one of those things we're tricked into enjoying. Oh my gosh, I'm getting hot. Put some cold water on. <sighs> now the water's too cold. <gasps> All right, well, I think it took me longer to fill the bath than the time I was actually in it. But yeah, that's enough. I can't even slide down all the way. Maybe for people under five foot. Okay. How has no one defied the laws of physics yet and invented bubbles alive for more than three minutes? Then there must be something. Like everlasting bubbles. That's gotta be a thing, right? Gosh. Alright, let's get out. Well, now that we bathed, um, now I'm going to show you my skincare routine. It's pretty trimmed down compared to the routines I've shown in the past. So let's just put this on. Hair out of the face. So what I've been using for my cleanser is this, this one by Fortuna Skin. It's the triple oil cleansing balm. It comes with this magnetic spoon that goes on the, the top. This is my second tub of it, so I do really like it. The texture is really thick, which I love, so I just grab about that much. It has a delicate, sweet, citrus sort of scent to it. I don't find it overpowering whatsoever. So that much. I'll warm it up in my hand. So it starts as a balm and then it breaks down into an oil and it gets rid of everything. And I can use it on my eyes with no issue. And as I'm just using this cleanser, I usually really take the time to massage and make sure everything is off, like on my neck and ears and everywhere. It also feels really nice to massage in, like this would be a good one to use gua sha with. And I'm just gonna use this mitt to take everything off. I really like these mitts as well because they just, it's a really good way to make sure you get everything off and I just use a different one every day. So I have about a week's worth of them and I just rotate them daily. Okay, clean face. Now I just use a smaller mitt and I go in with Lotion P50. This is Lotion P50 T, which is, uh, one of the versions here in Canada, because we only get two versions. The other one is Pick'em 400. And um, I just like alternating between the two. Now I did go off Biology Research for a while because I went down a rabbit hole and got everything. Then swore off the brand for a bit, but P50 is sort of a powerhouse product because it exfoliates and tones. So it's a good way to keep your skincare minimal if you are into chemical exfoliation. I did notice a difference when I stopped using it, so I went running back. Yeah, I just put it everywhere. Okay, so through those two products, we've cleansed, toned, and exfoliated. And now we are gonna moisturize with, get a load of this. So I'm using both these products here. So I have the original Creme de la Mer and the Sicily Black Rose Precious Face Oil. Precious indeed, who do I think I am? But this is such a luxurious combo. I, this is how I spoil myself. So I just used the spatula to get a bit of the cream. And then I'm just gonna take just a couple of drops. Of this, and I combine them and then 
know people roll their eyes at Lamet, but oh, I, I can't, I can't imagine using anything else. My skin is just a lot calmer and happier when I use it. But on its own, it is really thick, so I love mixing it with the Sisley oil. I've used it with the Le Mer Renewal oil before, which is also really nice, but oh, this Sisley Black Rose one is, I tell ya, God. But it is something that I really look forward to. And I don't use any eye cream, I just like to make sure I get around to my eye area. And then for lip balm, I use the Dream Slip by Sarah Hart. I've almost used this up. It's very thick, so I mainly use it at bedtime, but I also use it before I apply makeup sometimes. And that's it. I think this is pretty minimal, but what do you guys think? So how many products do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Five products, including lip balm. I think that's pretty good, right? I just don't want to fuss around too much with a library of products, you know, I've done that. I've been that girl in the past, but I'm happy to have as few products as possible that still deliver that efficacy. I don't want to be here forever patting crap on my face. I just want to get it done and enjoy the products while I'm doing it. And then sometimes before bed, I like to put in a hair oil and I just use this one. My mom got me on this years ago. Come on. I think it's even available at Walmart now. But um, yeah, I love the smell. To me, hair oil is just hair oil, you know? It's, I can't tell the difference between any of them. But I love the smell of this one, so I just get a little bit. And because I love the smell, I might put some on myself first if I put too much, and then just put the remainder on the, the ends. So I'm pretty sure this was in January, but in January, I got myself the La Mer Renewal Oil Balm, which is <laughs> so divine. If you've used the Renewal Oil, it smells exactly the same. It's like a really luscious, oily balm that it makes your skin feel like it's gone through some sort of treatment or something. I love it. And then I also got this body brush. It's by Gilded Body Care. battery died last night while we were chatting in the bathroom and I just went right to bed. But I believe I was telling you about the body brush I bought. So what I was gonna tell you is that maybe once a week at night I'll use the dry brush, you know, get relaxed and whatever. And then I'll have my shower and then after I put on the La Mer Renewal Body Oil Balm. I'm pretty sure that's the order of those words. So I also wanted to chat with you about how my low buy project has evolved. So this year in January, I had a slight binge on nude lipsticks. I must have purchased about six lip products and I'm really happy with the ones I got. I've been using them on rotation, so it wasn't money wasted, but it was certainly a, an assignment. And since then, I haven't purchased any new makeup, any new skincare, not even any new clothing either. It's all been very shockingly thoughtless and effortless. And the Sephora sale recently ended and I didn't purchase anything, didn't browse anything, I had no desire. I even hung out with a girlfriend and she wanted to go to Sephora and this was during the sale and I went in and I felt nothing. And I jokingly said to my friend, it's like I'm going through some sort of identity crisis. You know, it's like I'm finally proving my ex is right, that I'm dead inside. It's so strange to go from that extreme of that very drug-like kind of hunting and browsing and spending behavior to feeling completely indifferent and uninterested in purchasing anything or even looking. I mean, for example, the Byredo palette, the large one, Min Mineral Scapes, was recently released and I felt nothing. And this is Byredo. I mean, look behind me. This is Byredo. I'm a Byredo girl, but I felt nothing. Just nothing is igniting that spark. In my last video, I showed some Christian Louboutin lipsticks, and that's one shade that really got me. But 
after a, a couple of weeks of feeling, you know, a chokehold from it, I just, yeah, nothing. And I haven't felt anything since for anything. It's so bizarre. Yesterday I did make a purchase. I bought that bubble bath, but that didn't feel like impulsive or like an unnecessary or exciting purchase. It was, I didn't have any bubble bath and I wanted to take a bubble bath. So that was that. So one of the courses I took this semester was on uh, behavioral studies. And so for my final project for that class, I decided to focus on shopping addiction and I did a lot of research on it. So the scholars like to call it compulsive buying behavior, but we'll just call it you know, plainly what it is, shopping addiction. Characterized by an overwhelming, uncontrollable and relentless desire to buy items regardless of the consequences. I thought, yep. That's true, that resonates. Where shopping is being used as a tool to regulate emotions and mood, as well as mitigate stress and negative feelings. And at the height of my shopping addiction, this resonated a lot. I mean, quite a lot of the time, I would shop just out of boredom, or I'd be really happy, or it could be any sort of exaggerated emotion, and, and I would shop. It provided that rush of dopamine, which is horribly addictive, as some of us know. And then, of course, many papers talk about the influence of capitalism. Capitalism obviously thrives on consumer engagement, which inherently encourages the very addictive and pleasurable dimensions of consumption. And this is why shopping addiction isn't stigmatized like other addictions that make you an unproductive member of society, whereas Shopping addiction has euphemisms like shopping spree or retail therapy. Since we are contributing to economic expansion, we're like, yes, come on, keep on coming. And then I looked at a specific subcategory of this called limbic capitalism, which we see in the beauty and fashion space all the time in the emotional advertising in the sense that they're strategically marketing their items to target our limbic system, you know, in our brain. It evokes this almost pathological craving for this idealized lifestyle. So it blurs like fantasy and reality. And at least for me, that happened a lot. I was living in la la land. I would love what I would get, but it wasn't really conducive to my real life. I will say something that I think has been a huge catalyst in helping me overcome this cycle of desire and consumption is really reducing my social media usage. Really now I only use it to message a few people or maybe scroll through a few people's stories and that's it, but I'm not scrolling through my feed looking for things. And I've also unfollowed quite a few pages and that really helps. So as annoyingly simple as it sounds, out of sight, out of mind, over a period of time really works. Another part of it is that in the past couple of months I have finally <laughs> reached burnout. The thought was just, if I spend less, I don't have to work as much. <laughs> and this whole thought process really propelled the, well, whatever I do purchase from now on seriously needs to be worth my time that I am exchanging for it. Like how much of my physical, emotional, mental energy am I exchanging for this thing? And is it worth it? Like it really needs to be worth it to me now. And I would much rather put that money towards other things like having a nice experience with somebody or travel or something that just genuinely makes my life much easier where I can just appreciate a higher quality of time with myself or with others rather than feeling drugged by the prospect of another lifestyle and then spending towards these pretty things that feel exciting to receive in the moment, but then that excitement inevitably just poofs into thin air. But it is interesting to reflect and think that once very easily excited part of me is in a very, very deep sleep. Almost to the point where I find myself experiencing this very deep form of apathy. Of course, there are other things happening in my life. This isn't the focal point of my life, but this is the part I like to document. To go from so engaged and addicted to that desire to almost feeling repulsed at the thought of exchanging my valuable time and effort for a thing. It's like I've been released from the clutches of this addiction and it feels so freeing. And ultimately to be more deliberate with your money is a kind of luxurious way of living because everything is carefully curated and selected. And that brings me much closer to the joy that I was originally chasing when I was endlessly buying items. All right, enough about that. I do want to show you, I do want to show you this pink chair though, while I remember. You might remember that that used to be an orange chair and I do still have that chair, but this pink chair is giving me life right now. Someone in my building knows that I'm into 
colorful furniture. And they were gonna get rid of it. So I have it now. So all this to say, I'm not against buying stuff or I'm not against getting things that you like, but it's so nice to buy things not feeling out of control. And yes, it's only been two and a half months where I've been feeling this way, but I really do feel like I'm experiencing an internal shift. So I don't want to say I hope it lasts, I want to say I'm going to make sure it lasts. And of course, I'll keep you all updated along how it goes. Do you guys want to come and do this for me? <sighs> Nothing quite like fresh laundry, am I right? I've been working on making my bedroom feel a little cozier lately, so I replaced the lamps and bedside tables. And I love how it looks. The lamps are made of raw marble and they're so heavy. They kind of sparkle a little bit in certain lights. It looks really cool. And I'm not usually an incense girl, but I got these incense wreaths from Orbe. And it smells so good, just so relaxing. It has just like that, just enough smokiness to it. I believe it's their Cote d'Azur scent. It was one of their signature scents and I love it. Normally I'm a candle girl. Right now I'm loving candles by Harlem Candle Co. Their candles are exquisite. They just smell so wonderful. The scent I have right now is called Langston. And normally I don't gravitate towards sweet scents, but this is like that perfect, rich, smooth, sexy, sweet scent. It's really nice. But yeah, I just love running one of those incense sticks at night, just especially right before I go to bed, because it just completely winds me down and it just feels so relaxing. A couple of videos ago, I think I talked about how I wanted to focus on improving my sleep quality this year because Historically, I've been a terrible sleeper and I've suffered from insomnia for years. So I've purchased two things that have really helped with this. One is simply an alarm clock, so I keep it beside my bed. I didn't think this would have any effect on me at all, but it really has because now when I see the time and I can go back to sleep after, Whereas before I would check on my phone and then I would check this website and I would browse as a way to self-soothe and that was just not a good idea. So now when I just see the time, I can go back to sleep and that has been phenomenal in terms of improving my sleep quality. I mean, it's still not great. I'm not like a model sleeper by any means, but it's better than before. And the other thing I got is an aura ring and this has been really helpful as well because I think there's something about knowing exactly how I'm sleeping that comforts me, whereas before, I just sort of assumed it was a bit of a mystery. Like I knew I didn't feel rested, but I wanted to know exactly how much I was sleeping and what might be causing me to sleep so badly. So anyway, I've been wearing the aura ring for the past few months and I really, like, I can't imagine not wearing it now. I am quite dependent on it. Last night I didn't sleep so well, so this is gonna be a really crappy <laughs> example. So it gives you a score and it just tells you exactly how much you're sleeping. I believe that Apple Watch is similar. So the first thing I would suggest is getting an alarm clock. It is astounding how impactful that is because it really diminishes the desire to use your phone throughout the night. Because I mean, if you wanna know the time instinctively, if you don't have an alarm clock, you'd go for your phone. But without the need to do that, Oh, it's it's way better. And obviously there are other things conducive to better sleep hygiene. I'm sure you know these things already, but I'm just speaking about what has been helpful for me in terms of improving my sleeping habits to give me hopefully a better quality of sleep in the future long term. I am noticing that at night I'm leaning more into binging television shows now because Instead of binging on shopping, I'm binging on something else. <laughs> I'm finding a lot of TV, and I do generally like TV anyway as an escape, but yeah, it's certainly uh, increased a little. Something I've been thinking about lately is finding joy in the spaces in between the highs, because there are a lot of highs in our everyday life, even if it's something simple like a freshly washed towel that's just fresh out of the dryer, it's warm, it's so clean, but ultimately it's so fleeting. 
And Delia, I mentioned feeling this extreme form of apathy, and I'm wondering if this is what detoxing from shopping addiction feels like, because I'm not filling my dopamine tank as regularly as I used to, so now what is that? And now when I look at everyday things, I just, it feels incredibly mundane. But I know that that's not true. I know that there is joy to be found in there. So I think it's all well and good to feel liberated from feeling compelled to hunt for things and to want things. But then outside of that, I'm thinking, well, then what is truly bringing me happiness and contentment? Ultimately, it needs to come from myself, and I'm wondering what certain things will ignite that spark. To me, it doesn't matter like how wonderful your job is, or how wonderful your relationship is, or how wonderful your friendships are. There is something deep inside you that needs to light that match for you to feel that fire from within. It doesn't come from purely external sources. It really needs to come from, from you. So I am curious to see what that looks like for me. I'm not even sure if I'm making sense anymore. It's late, I've got to put this folded laundry away. And then, and then I might take a bath. Because in the froth of our desires, like bubbles in a bath, the thrill of new acquisitions and shiny things really just swiftly dissipates and it leaves us yearning for more, always more. Yet true recovery and contentment lie not in the ceaseless pursuit of the new, but in cherishing the quiet and often very overlooked moments of joy that daily life can offer us. So by embracing the beauty and the familiar and finding pleasure in the modest, we can get closer to that kind of happiness or contentment that ultimately no new item or acquisition can match. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and we'll chat soon.